Hi, my name is Meredith Hoggett, and my presentation is on boreal forest fire ecology and its effect on saproxylic beetles. I love insects, so I thought that I would make them more of the focus. The boreal forest, also known as the taiga, which is a Russian word for swampy forest, comprises about 30% of the world's forested area. It's distributed across Canada, Alaska, Russia, and Finiscania, which is the peninsula including Finland, Norway, and Sweden. Over 70% of the boreal forest is in Eurasia, and it's known to be a high latitude area with very cold winters lasting six to eight months of the year. Due to its position on the globe, it has a short growing season. About one third of the forested area is underlain with permafrost, which prevents roots from growing too deep into the soil. The canopy layer consists of a low diversity of tree species. While they, the species are different between North America and Eurasia, they do um, consist of the same common genera. So we have for our gymnosperms, um, fir, larch, pine, spruce as most common with angiosperms being poplar, birch, alder, and willow. While these are not the best adapted for fire, they do have some strategies that help them persist after a fire. Um, black spruce has semi serotonous cones, and then other species um, have winged seeds for uh, dispersal. As for ground cover, the boreal forest is limited on the number of vascular plant species. It's mainly dominated by bryophytes, or so mosses and liverworts, and lichens. Many of the mosses and lichens are circumboreal, unlike the tree species. You can find them across the entire ecosystem. These help in regulating soil hydroclimate and nutrient cycling um, and act as a thermal buffer. Their ability to hold water protects the permafrost during dry summer conditions. And then they're also an influence in severity of combustion with wild, wildfires. When we look at vertebrate biodiversity in North America, we find migratory species such as caribou and reindeer. Um, there are also species such as snowshoe hares, lynx, ground squirrels, red squirrels, boreal red back bull, grizzly black bears, moose, and deer. Eurasia has a similar mix of animals, including red fox, mountain hare, owls, black grouse, brown bear, and many more. On to the invertebrates. In Canada's forest alone, there are about 32,000 species of insects. Um, these are able to survive cold winters due to their hardiness and ability to go into dormancy. Most of the studies that have been done on insects in the boreal forest are on pests due to their effects on loss of trees. Um, a couple of the most famous are the spruce budworm, which is pictured here. Its hosts are white spruce and balsam fir. And there's another called jack pine budworm, whose host is jack pine. What I'd like to concentrate more on is the less studied uh, saproxylic beetles. These depend on dead and decaying wood. In Sweden, there are about 1,000 beetle species that rely on decaying wood. So you can only imagine how many species um, across the ecosystem rely on dead wood. So before diving into the effects of fire on saproxylic beetles, we need to talk about fire. So in general, fire is the largest natural dis disturbance in the boreal forest. Boreal fire activity emits about 9% of global fire emissions due to carbon that is sequestered in peat, soil, and permafrost. And the most cause of fire is by lightning strikes. The frequency kind of depends on if you're in North America or Eurasia. I'll go into that in a minute. Um, severity, there's severe stand replacing crown fires in both North America and Russia um, with more non-lethal surface fires in Eurasia or other parts of Eurasia. Seasonality, this just kind of depends on your moisture level, um, and you'll see why I say that. So there are some differences between fire regimes in North America and Eurasia. Um, in North America, they have high intensity crown fires. Between 
60% and 80% of all fires are less than 12 acres in size. So most of the fires are quite small, but in extreme years, they can lead to burning of close to 500,000 acres, which is a very huge disturbance. These fires occur every 50 to 100 years, um, even to 500 years in the wetter areas. In Eurasia, there's, for Russia, um, there's limited data on fire occurrence. Um, with what there is, it's estimated to have low and medium inti intensity of surface fires. In Sweden, fire occurs about every 110 to 155 years, sometimes 270 years. And in Finoscandia, there, the further north that you travel, the lower fire frequency is. So for, forest management ends up playing a large role in fire activity, leading to human interference as the largest dis disturbance concern. While a larger portion of the forest remains untouched, the areas that are being tapped for resources are being greatly impacted. In Finiscandia, less than 5% of the forest remains in its natural state, which is pretty alarming. Um, as our demands for natural resources increase, it's more likely that human interference will spread and we will start to see the effects of that on our ecosystems. So the boreal forest is managed mainly um, to protect the resources that it provides to the world. One method of doing this is fire suppression. While fire is a threat to our wood source, um, we want to keep this from happening. Uh, but in Scandinavia, fire frequency has dropped due to suppression um, in areas that were burned, or there was a 1% burn area. Now this is down to less than a 0.2% burn area. Um, with our natural resources being timber, timber production is a huge um, role in this system. Clear cutting of forested areas results in homogenization um, in species composition and stand age. And this in turn uh, causes a decline in biodiversity in vegetation and animal species. And there's also a trend in North America that is starting to spread, which is the removal of salvage laws post fire. Um, so after a fire, they'll come in and remove any logs that are deemed um, useful for production still. And this is expected to increase due to economic pressure and threat of climate change. As I mentioned before, um, Saproxylic beetles rely on habitats created by fire. Um, with fire suppression, it, these habitats are um, prevented from being created. Uh, there's a dramatic decrease in deadwood through cutting and salvage removal post fire, which also results in habitat loss. Cobb et al. reported loss of deadwood in Finiscandia or Finoscandinavian forest has already resulted in eradication of several saproxylic insect species. Um, in Finland, 112 of 183 threatened or in extinct beetle species are impacted by dead wood. So why do we care about these insects? Why do we, why do we care about insects that people will would probably want to just step on. So invertebrates are seen as a reliable indicator of anthropogenic effects on ecosystems. So if we're not paying attention to how they are affected, we could be missing effects um, on other uh, species and other ecosystem processes. Also, the loss in saproxylic beetles could disrupt nutrient cycling. Um, if we look at the figure to the left created by Cobb et al, um, they found that a species of wood feeding beetles uh, aided in the beginning stages of returning nutrients of decaying wood into the soil. Um, and then along with this, the frass was seen to 
attract more soil microbes, um, increasing their ability to take up uh, nitrogen, which decreased leaching of nitrogen in the soil post fires. And then this, this frost also helped in the germination of early succession of plants. So it's easy to see in this figure how these beetles are important for the ecosystem and for nutrient cycling. So in order to reverse the decline in biodiversity, not only in our saproxylic beetles, but other vegetation and animal species, um, we need to figure out how to ret restore these ecosystems um, and restore the processes that are occurring in them. So in order to do this, we can use fire. So we can decrease the amount of suppression and also increase the number of prescribed burns. Um, and hopefully this will increase species richness, richness and abundance. Um, and it was found that fire is actually more effective than just gap cutting for fire dependent in general subproxylic um, insects. So clear cutting is definitely not just the answer. It could be um, helpful, but in most cases, I think fire would be a much better resource. Another strategy would be to leave dead wood and snags post fire. We do not need to go in and remove um, potential habitats for organisms that are coming in for to begin the succession of these ecosystems. And then another strategy is to create dead wood in timber production. So we're going to still be cutting wood. We might as well leave some wood for our lovely organism friends so they can, they can persist. So um, this has been my talk on the boreal forest fire ecology and the effects on saproxylic beetles. Hopefully you all have a new appreciation for these little insects. Thank you and please take a look at my references.